this lesson, we're going to go over the Maya 2018 user interface. Let's go ahead and get started. When you launch Maya, this is what it will look like in its default state. It's going to come up under Maya Classic, which is a workspace. We can choose different workspaces to work within. And the windows and configuration of Maya is going to change according to the different workspace. So this would be an animation workspace right here. You'll notice that the perspective window, we're looking through a camera here, the perspective camera, which you can see under here in the outliner. The outliner shows everything in the scene. And these are grayed out right here because they are all hidden. We don't usually manipulate the default cameras that open up with Maya. We just use them to look through, which is what we're doing right now. We're looking through the perspective camera out into the viewport. This is a single panel layout right here. And this is a grid. So we'll talk a little bit more about the viewport in another lesson. For this lesson, we're just going to go over the layout of the user interface. So just know by selecting a workspace, you can change what comes up. So this is a rigging one, okay, a modeling standard one. This will give you a lot more space to work in. Okay, I'm just going to go back to Maya Classic. And let's go ahead and just start with the very top right here. So we've got the pull-down menus. And these pull-down menus are going to change according to what menu set you have uh, chosen. So the menu sets, it defaults on modeling. And you'll notice that as I change, everything after Windows is going to change. So if I switch over to Rigging, so everything after Windows has now changed. So we've got different tools associated with Rigging. Okay, same thing with animation, All right? Those have changed and so forth. So the menu sets are actually organized for a production workflow or a pipeline. Animation production begins with modeling and that's the first stage. The, the character or the scene is modeled, objects in a scene. They go on to rigging. This is putting in the bone structure and then from there they go over to animation and the animator animates and uh, separate from that is effects animation so this is things like fluids and particles and fur and cloth all happen under here okay so sometimes this is uh, supporting the actual model so if you've got cloth or, or hair on a character model uh, this is created over here all right, and then the very last stage of production is rendering. Okay, so that's where everything is output. And from there it goes to post-production, which is usually uh, compositing the layers together in something like Nuke. Okay, so let's just switch over to the modeling tool set here. So again, we've got all the pull-down menus, and this is all the tools associated with this particular menu set. Okay, so what you're seeing down here which may be confusing at first, are just shortcuts to the most commonly used menus or tools up here in the uh, menu pull down. So for instance, under Create, I've got Polygon Primitives, Spheres, which is the same as coming over here and just clicking on the shortcut for Spheres, Polygon Sphere. And the second line down here is called the status line. So after the menu pull down right here, we've got the status line. These are a lot of shortcuts to things that are underneath the pull down menu. So under file and edit, uh, we have some of these shortcuts right here. So this is creating a new scene. If you hover over any of these icons here, you will get a, a help window that pops up, dialog box. Okay, this is opening, we've got saving, uh, as well as uh, undo and redo right here. Okay, we've got different ways of selecting, and my mouse is sticking right now, I'm not sure why. Uh, different ways of selecting things. These are different ways of snapping, so these allow you to snap to a grid, to a curve, points, and so forth. 
and then jumping down here we can work with symmetry on or off so quite often when we're modeling we're working in object X or sometimes world X uh, that way it will uh, duplicate over on the other side what we're doing all right and then over here uh, these are clapperboards so this is the uh, the rendering shortcuts right here so we've got a render window and we've got render settings okay Arnold is the default render right here so it says render using and this is where you can change your renders okay and then we've got um, our materials under here so this is the hyper shade the default material is called Lambert one we don't ever change this this is the flat gray surface that is put on all the objects when we create them okay and then you have the ability to create other uh, types of materials in here or shaders okay so that's sort of an interchangeable name of uh, either material or shader okay all right just gonna close these down right here all right we already looked at the workspace and then we've got some shortcuts right here uh, we can bring up the uh, modeling toolkit and again more shortcuts for a lot of the things that are used for modeling are right here you may or may not have this depending on if it was loaded or not this is a, a human IK rigging system here okay we've got our attribute editor we have nothing in our scene right now so we can't look at attributes until we have something in our scene uh, if I come over here and just uh, check on my outliner, grab a perspective camera. We've got some attributes to look at now, okay? And channel box. So this is uh, telling us where things are in space uh, in relationship to Maya's world in this grid right here. So these grids are divided up into units and we will talk about this more in the next lesson. But just know that the channel box is showing the location of things and these are also things that can be animated as well so as things are moving through space uh, they're translating or rotating these all can be keyed for animation okay and that was the modeling toolkit I showed you right there so you can click on them up here uh, here's the the tool settings so pretty much everything in uh, Maya will have uh, different settings for the tools that you select Okay, and then this last one right here just brings you back to the, the channel box and layer editor. So this is the channel box up here, and then these are the layers down here. Uh, we've got display layers and animation layers. Okay, and then coming down here to the bottom, we've got our uh, timeline, and we've got a range slider right here. Okay, so we can uh, start, uh, usually it starts on frame one and uh, we can add frames over here so if I type in 500 you have to hit enter for Maya to read things okay so I can just change the timeline now we're still seeing 120 right here because the range slider needs to slide out okay so I can either slide it or I can set a different range right here depending on uh, if I'm working on a a dialogue or something on my character and I just want to hone in on that area of the animation I can work on that all right we've got some playback uh, buttons right here uh, playing forward and back jumping to keyframes forward and back as well as uh, stepping back one frame or stepping back to the beginning or the end okay and then coming down here we've got a mail command line so MEL stands for Maya embedded language that's the native language for Maya uh, Maya also reads Python right here this is a command respond you'll get feedback here sometimes a prompt or sometimes an error message will show up in here okay uh, we're working on 24 frames per second uh, we can do continuous loops if we're playing back our animation in here this is for auto keyframe toggling on and off We've got a shortcut here for our preferences, so it defaults onto the animation preferences. Time slider right here. Okay, uh, but these are the preferences for everything, and this is actually found under Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences. So this will bring up the same window right here. Okay, this is just the shortcut for it, uh, and it will take you right into the animation settings right here.
A good thing to bring up is the UI elements, and this will allow you to toggle them on and off. So this is the status line, the shelf, time slider, range slider, command line, health line, toolbox, which we haven't touched on yet. Okay, so I'm just going to close that down. So the status line was across here. We've got a whole bunch of tabs across here that break down the different tools that are used out here on what is called the shelf. Okay, so it probably defaulted on poly modeling, and these are just shortcuts to the most commonly used tools and functions that are found under here. Okay, so they've just put them together in a pre-made shelf right here. You can also customize these as well and add to existing ones. Over here, we've got uh, different ways of selecting, okay, different tools for selecting, and then we have move, scale, and rotate. And uh, something that's really helpful is to actually go out to the Autodesk site. If you do a search for the Maya 2018 interface overview, and this will give you some really good information. You can actually spend quite a bit of time in here going through this and um, learning about the different aspects of Maya. This is one that I really like for beginners. It gives you a visual on the breakdown. So if we click on this right here, what's nice is that it gives you a, a number here and then a corresponding information about this particular part of the user interface. All right, so just moving back over here to Maya. Okay, so we'll come back in the next lesson and we will talk about how to navigate in the viewport.